guess, right? Well, or that was the fox uh, hole. That one. was the fox yeah. hole. This amateur radio roundtable is brought to you in part by ICOM America. And, right. and there's a mouse on my eyebrow. There you go. Okay. All right. Take it away, Katie. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Katie, WI7YL here with the Amateur Radio Roundtable. Today is November 5th. My goodness, how did that happen? Um, hope everybody is having a great day so far. And if you're joining us on YouTube after the fact, thanks so much for logging in and giving our show a watch. We're also live on WBCQ 5130. So if you're out there listening shortwave, we'd love to hear a signal report from you. Give Tom an email at tom at w5kub.com. Tonight's show should be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about it. We've got Martin F. Jew with us. He is a, I always want to say November, but he's Kilo 5, Foxtrot Lima uniform, Mr. MFJ himself. And uh, Tom went down to visit him last week and put together some videos. So we're going to see what's been happening down at MFJ. I also want to remind everybody we have a really fun Facebook group. If you're interested in joining in there, we have lots of good conversations and share times for getting on the air, projects, and so forth. So if you just do a search on w5kub.com on Facebook groups. You'll find us and send us a request to join. We'd love to have you. With that being said, I think I might have covered everything, Tom, but let me send it over to the big boss, W5KUB. Tom, take it away. Hey, Katie. You did great <laughs> after... Uh, oh, phew. Thanks. Yeah, after, <laughs> uh, after I found the right buttons to push it, everything started working right. I mean, I thought, man, why is, it, why is everything frozen up? Oh, well. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. My uh, pleasure. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to the show tonight. Uh, you know, I went down uh, last week to MFJ and got some good video there. You guys, let me just tell you a, a couple things about the video first. Uh, we only had one microphone, so there's going to be some ups and downs in the volume. Uh, I tried my best to hold it over to the person talking, but you know how that goes. So I'm going to try to manually uh manage the audio tonight uh, while we're talking so you're going to have a little highs and some lows but uh, that's going to be the best we can do tonight also i gotta say this i had a new cameraman with me uh, uh last week uh, my my close friend uh, ed harrison and he didn't get the memo he was supposed to not put the camera on my hair with it uncombed we got a lot of shots of that <laughs> And also, we had just eaten at Obie's, and um, I looked really full after eating at Obie's there. So, you know, just disregard, <laughs> disregard all that right there. So, so let me, let me just, uh, uh, hey, we got some great, we got some new people in the chat room here. I talked to them tonight on 40 meters. We got Ed in there. Uh, what was Ed's call? Uh, uh, man, I, forget, I don't have it in front of me. Ed's in there. Um... Uh, there, I saw a couple others in there tonight. But anyway, um, we'll open the phone lines up after a while. And if you guys want to call in, uh, give us a call, and, and we'll be glad to uh, talk to you there. Hey, Martin, uh, you know, thank you for taking us down to Obie's. And uh, that is just a great place to eat and stuff yourself. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, the real reason I took y'all down to Obi was because I wanted to go there. Is that right? Don't you get a chance to go uh, whenever you want to? <clears throat> well, I do, but I don't. I usually just drive home. It's on my way home. And Is that right? Yeah, I go home and eat a hot dog or something. <laughs> well, I tell you, Obi's is this great. Uh, uh, Katie, have you you've been have you been down to uh, Starkville, to MFJ? No, I have not. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's peekaboo attacking the uh, microphone behind me. It's there she goes. She wants yeah. to get on the air apparently. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, hey, hey, you're gonna no, have to plan No, I need a... to come down to visit because I definitely want to check out Obi's too. Yeah. Okay. There's uh there's uh, Ed KI4YTV. Uh, thanks Ed for joining us tonight, man. And uh, Arnie, I heard you checking in the uh, the North American net tonight, North American traffic net. You know, hey, uh, enter, let me just say this real quick about the net tonight. Our net didn't go over very well tonight. On 7180, this group came in there and took over the net. Do you believe that? The 7180 North American traffic net, they normally meet on 7185, but for some reason, they, they moved down to 7180. And I'm thinking, what in the world's going on? We've been, on, we've been you know, having a net here for about two years. And I said, is this a new net? What's going on? And they just QSY down because... Uh, uh, I guess of uh, interference or something. Anyway, probably we'll be back on 7180 next week. Uh, it was no big deal. We moved down to 7178. We didn't have about five, five or six check-ins. Uh, but hey, tonight I met a couple new people in there, and uh, uh, that was uh, that was great. So uh, and uh, so hey, Martin, let's. Uh, Martin, what what have you been up to since I left you down here, man? You got anything new going down here? Oh shoot, man, that's so you. I'm gonna. I can't hardly remember. Well, yeah, that's, it's been a while now. You uh, was that was that this week or last week? Well, I, 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 it was last week. It was last oh, week. I've got a phone it. number. Let me let me. I gotta get this phone number off the off of the screen here. There we go, boy. I'm not doing too good tonight. Well, look, hey, Martin, I really enjoyed it down there, and uh, we're going to have to get Katie down here one day, and uh, yeah. maybe we can all just meet up down here. Uh, it's only about a three-hour drive for me. I'll come down, and we'll go back to Obie's and eat again. Well, we have to plan a time when it's really cold up here, so I have a good reason to go oh. south. <laughs> well, hey, Martin, it was cold the day I came down. If you remember, it was about 40, and the wind was blowing about 40 miles an hour. We like to froze to death out there. You're, you're right. It was super cold. <laughs> yeah, it, it it really was here. Well, yeah. hey, Katie. Yeah. Degrees. Yeah. So, Katie, uh, anything going on uh, with you? You got any trips planned? Uh, you been anywhere? Well, let's see. I do have, I was in uh, Phoenix recently at HRO, and on Thursday morning, I'm flying down to Plano HRO, and I'm going to be back, blah, 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 let me try that again. <laughs> I'll be down there Thursday, all day Friday, and a good chunk of Saturday, and I believe my friend Teresa is going to be coming in to visit. I'm very excited about that. So I'll be at the store doing a variety of different things, and I just posted a little teaser video on the HRO Facebook page about it. And uh, looking forward to it because I've never been down to the Plano store before. And uh, and it should be a little warmer than it is here because I think tomorrow it's supposed to get up to a whole 18 degrees. Oh, so man. looking forward to that. And I'm really excited also because the last day of the uh, big uh, de-expedition, Dwayne and I both got that, what was it, Victor Papa 6 radio. Pick Karen Island, thank you. Yeah, I got them on uh, 15 and 20. It's always yeah, I always find it amazing in this great, enormous, vast world of people and ham radio operators and you've got folks doing a de-expedition out in the middle of lord only knows where and you hear a voice on the radio at this de-expedition and you actually know who it is and i'm like i think that's alan there at echo alpha three sugar hotel ocean out of spain and sure enough he was the run one and when he heard me calling he says is this my friend katie <laughs> i thought yeah. oh my gosh that's really it's a lot of fun when that happens and <laughs> so that was kind of nice i hadn't i haven't really chased any dx lately and they were just about to leave. Uh, I think that was their last day. They were already starting to pack up. So I was like, I at least got them in a the log. Well, all right. Uh, hey, I see uh, that Dwayne is back there. He's he's home tonight. And he's, he seems he to always get to ham. He's, does he do anything else besides ham? 
Uh, well, not when he's home. Yeah. Unfortunately, he doesn't do any of his honeydew list, but he does get on the ham radio. Right. <laughs> well, you know, he's on he's on 160 meters right now doing some FT8 because that's the one mode he can sit back there and operate and still listen to the show on his headphones and be able to do things without any kind of interference here. So it works out pretty good. All right. Well, we, we're going to be careful because I know he is listening to the show. So we'll, he, we'll he is real. listening, so behave. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, uh, Martin, Martin, let's come back over to you, Martin, and uh, let's talk a little about, you've got something new. you got a new toy down at uh, MFJ here the past month or so. Tell us about that new toy. Uh, okay. Well, it's a uh, pretty good size, much bigger than we thought. It wouldn't go through the door. <clears throat> oh, man. First of all. Uh, it came in unassembled. Well, not totally, but it was unassembled to the point where they could put it on a, a, a flat bed truck. But uh, they had to do something to get it in the door. Then once they set it all up, took them a week or a couple of weeks to get it all set up. And... Uh, <clears throat> Then they found out it was uh, taller than the ceiling of the building. Oh, no. Oh, but no. Oh, gosh. Chain off. What did they do? They have to cut the legs off or something? <clears throat> well, part of the top of the machine, which is just a plastic cover. So, oh, that right. But it took about a month to get it all set up. But it's fully operational now. And we're going to show that tonight. I've got some video of that, and we're going to try to show it in operation. Uh, are you ready to, uh, uh, to, to watch this? And, uh, I am. I and, think... and look, hey, if, you, if anything comes up and you want to just yell or shout out, I'll stop the video, and, and we can talk about it for a minute. Uh, but let me, uh, let me put it on. This is the, uh, this is the metal shop at MFJ, and... This is where you punch all the cabinets for all your products, your amplifiers, your tuners, your SWR bridges, analyzers. Everything is punched here, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's where uh, all the cabinets are made. Okay. We have another, another place that does the stamping. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let me see if I can get this video running, and I'm going to try my best to... Um, kind of balance the audio so guys out there watching um, sorry about the audio but uh, hey I just want everybody to know that uh, I have already built and uh, constructed uh, a device that will now go mobile with us and we can run multiple uh, microphones so next time we do this we'll have multiple microphones on this trip we only had one mic with us so here we go let's see if I can run this thing Let's see if it will work here. Hey, we, we've met before. How you doing, man? How you doing? Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. I got hey, a man, I hear you got some new equipment here. Yeah, I got a new machine back here. Uh, got an automatic loader on it. Uh, we're excited about what it's doing. Well, you know, I, I hear you don't even have to be here now. That thing will run itself almost. Yeah, they're trying to get rid of me. That's what it is. <laughs> I, I smell paint coming or from your your uh, uh, silk screen. Yeah, I just came out of the silk screen room. That's right. All right. That's, uh, that's, uh, where, what can we see first, man? We're going to run a 974 HB. All right, we're going to do a 974 HB. I'm not I sure what I, that is. I don't know what a 974 HB is. Martin Farley didn't know. Is this it right here? This is the new one. Oh man, this is uh this is first class here, man. This is this is not like the punch I remember. Oh. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure the number. Okay, so you're making a what a nine what? Uh, a 974 HB. Okay. All right, well let's do it. So he put, pushes the magic button here, and oh, look over there. Let's, what, we got something going over there. Uh, is it going to pick the metal out or something? Or? It's, reading, it's reading the clamps. It, it's reading what? It's reading the position of the clamps. 
so it doesn't so the machine doesn't punch on the clamp okay well this is above my pay level oh man this is i don't remember the other punch being this big um, did it have all this stuff the, it does not no it didn't so this is uh what's it what's it doing now filling the tires that, up or something? that air that you hear blowing is set, making sure that the sheets are separated so it doesn't pick up more than one at a time oh i see that's picked the sheet up already there oh i see the suction cups right there i didn't know i thought it was part of the uh, system all right look at this oh, i like it man uh oh uh, i like it Yeah, I think we could build one of these. Oh what yeah. Think, man? Oh yeah. All right. All right. Now what's that over here? Is it is it punching? Yes, it's punching and it if if you've seen or heard our other machines, you can tell that it is much quieter. It has a lot uh quieter uh function to it as it's running. Yeah, I, I, I can barely it, hear it. It sounds uh, real muffled like uh, you know it is real quiet. Well, how many how many boxes are you gonna punch out here on this? Um, this will punch 20 boxes on this sheet. And again, what was this product? It's a 974 HB. Now what is that? Uh, I'm yeah. quite honestly not sure. Okay. A 974 HB, whatever that is. Somebody look it up out there. It's watching the show tonight. Whatever it is, we're gonna do 24 uh, uh, boxes. We're gonna do 20 boxes here real quick. In the past, we were only able to punch five of these at a time, and the sheets had to be cut into sections. Now we'll punch 20 of them and not have to cut the sheet. Um, that, that thing is no, really quiet. No, I don't. Well, do we have anything that's already punched out here? <clears throat> so. Ready to be D bird. Yeah. Printed. So I'm guessing that two uh, coax connectors go in here, probably a meter, and maybe a maybe a capacitor and a yeah. sensitivity or something. I don't know. Yeah. There it is. Hey, so um, let's walk through. Let's walk through the uh, uh, silk screen. Have hey, hey, Brad take us through the silk screen. I know okay, it's, it's uh, Ed. Uh, Ed right? says the MFJ 974 HB is okay. the right, let's, uh, let's balance line tuner. Because uh, I don't want my eyeballs coated with yep. with that. I put a link in the chat here room we go. too. Yeah, we're going into secret silk screen area here now. <laughs> All right, I can smell paint already. All right. Hello, how are you? What? So you're making the uh, your silk screening the 945E, whatever that is. It looks like a antenna tuner or something. Yeah, you're gonna be on our show. No, it'd be probably Tuesday night. So. Uh, have you, uh, can you, in a minute, when you get ready, can you silk screen us uh, uh, something? Or are we not? Yeah, I, I know. Well, that's okay. But just tell us how it works, okay? That's, it, it probably is. Just tell it, just kind of uh, go through the process and tell us what you do. You, you raise us up and what, put the, put the board in there or, or the, the, the cover? Yeah, it, it, has, it has to be set up first. And uh -huh. you just take it and just, call it a jeep but it keeps it in place so it don't slide or anything uh -huh. make sure it's clean and free of dust or deburr and you just take it and you want to make sure you get everything on there you got to press hard put pressure on it not, go over it, just, once. just once if you go over it twice it may yeah, blur, it you know may. blur or yeah. look that looks double good. that looks really good wow the whole thing's printed here yeah looks good all right. Well, you got your another one now. How long does it take before this uh, paint dries so you can't, you know, smear it with your hand? Maybe a uh, just a few ten seconds. Oh, really? Dry now. Is that right? Okay. Well, 
I messed it up. Oh, he messed that one up. Oh, you bad. You bad. Martin, he, he messed that one up, Martin. He you bad. It, so. Well, that's very good. Okay, we're going out. I'm really impressed with the new punch, man. I like it. It's doing a really good job for us. So metal, you get metal coming in here. Now, some of this metal's already painted black, isn't it? Do you order it with the? We order it when it comes in. It's already painted black. Yeah. Uh, we we do have some that's that's plain aluminum or whatever, but yeah. our black metal is already pre-painted when it comes in. So if you wanted to punch a box that you don't have a, a configuration for, is it fairly easy for you to go to the computer and just draw a couple little circles and? measurements and say that you know use this template and stamp me out a box it is uh you can go in and, and place uh coordinates in autocad or or use a dxf drawing file and this uh software that we're using actually will generate the box for us so well, next time i build something i have to send you an email man and, and uh, give you the dimensions there all right well hey uh martin uh I tell you, I'm impressed with your uh, with your puncher, man. That thing, it's it's very quiet too. Well, it is very quiet. Um, uh, you know, if you can imagine a huge sledgehammer cracking yeah. concrete, that's what the old punch presses sound like. And you know, when you were watching uh, Kathleen. Uh, Six hey screen no uh, cabinet. Uh, Maritron right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well they they the the cabinet was still flat, hasn't been built bent yet. Uh -huh. And the reason for that is that when she six screens it, she six screens both the front the, the front and, and back. the back. That's the reason we six screen it before we bend it. Yeah. It saves a step. Well, uh, I, I I remember uh, hearing the other punch, and it was really, really loud. This one is so quiet. Man, it's just, you don't even know it's running almost. Yeah, no, you're right. And the guy you were talking to, he is the manager of the metal shop. And um, uh, he went up to Chicago twice uh, for a week at a time learning about the hardware and then about the software and um he's still learning but he's getting pretty good at it now well that's good it looks like he had things going there and uh, you were you were knocking out the boxes so uh i'm glad you got that now you hey i know that was a big dollar item just by looking at that so you're going to probably have to raise prices what a few cents uh, on each one of them or something man uh yeah yeah we got to sell a lot of stuff race yeah price a little bit well maybe you can maybe you can sell enough that you don't have to raise the prices well that would be great um uh, uh one of the problems with the prices is the tariffs oh okay so martin yeah. did you did you ever think back in 1960s when you started this well, you, when did you start? You started probably 70? Uh, the first ad that we ran was in October of 1972. Okay. Was, uh, what is that, 47 years ago. Yeah, about that. Yeah, did you ever think back then that, that you would have a product, a ham radio product, in nearly every single shack in the United States? Did you think that? <laughs> Uh, no, no idea. Didn't, didn't have enough sense to think that far ahead. In fact, if I, I would go as far as to say, uh, and in many uh, shacks internationally, but probably in the United States, I bet you just about everybody's got something from MFJ. Uh, well, if, if they don't have, if they don't have something, I bet they have a catalog. Or several yeah. somethings. Yeah, yeah, or several. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet you, Katie has something. Yeah, that's what I said. Several something. Several. <laughs> All right. Well, that, that, that's so cool there. Uh, man, uh, we always enjoy it. It's like, uh, Katie, it's like uh, Christmas time when I go down and visit Martin. And uh, we, we did so much video, uh, we, we, we don't 
have enough time tonight. So we've got a whole nother show of just uh, being with Martin in his office and talking. Oh, and then we tour all the MFJ uh, manufacturing in the back. And that's a big deal. That, that video is about 30 minutes. So we'll see that a little later. Uh, next, uh, next, we're going to go over to the Ameritron company. And we're going to, uh, uh, I think, who is it? It's Randy over there. Is that right, uh, Martin? Randy, yeah. Yeah. You yep. didn't go on to uh, High Gain of Cushcraft, did you? The, no, we didn't have time. We needed to get back. I mean, Martin has got like seven companies there. And I usually try to get by Cushcraft and High Gain and, and all that. But we didn't have time this time. But uh, we're going to go next to, uh, we're going to go next to Ameritron. And I want you guys to look how pretty this stuff is. I mean, this stuff is so pretty, Martin. I, I, I'm thinking about buying some, just leave the cover off and just put it on my coffee table so, so people can look at it, you know, when they come in. <clears throat> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put another video on here. This is Randy over at Ameritron. And uh, we had fun over there. So let me see if I can get it going. So here we go. Uh, here we go. Hey, guys, we're at uh, Ameritron right now, and we're with Randy. And Randy, what's your call? Or do you have KT5 NIS. KT5 NIS, okay. Yeah. And Randy's going to take us around here. But the first thing I noticed, I mean, you know, you guys build some high-power amplifiers here, right? That's right. And there's all kinds of ways to check it, but the uh, first thing I was noticing is the marijuana plants down here in the center. Now, y'all use those specially to uh, tr the RF somehow. What do you mean by high power? The high power stuff right there. You, you use those to kind of help tune the amplifiers, right? Which way do we need to go first? Go down this way. All right. That looks like an input circuit for one of your amps. The input circuits for the, uh, the 82, the 1500, and the 1200 circuit. Uh, so, yeah, you can see the little tuning slugs right yeah. there on the side. Hi. So, so there's an individual uh, uh, tuning coil there for each each of the bands. Right. An individual slug for each band. So, and we tune that here. That's not something the customer normally does. We tune it here to yeah, match yeah. the tube to the transmitter 50 ohms now, I've got an a, uh, AL80B does it have something similar to this yeah, or are they all the tube amplifiers have something similar it's not exactly like this but every one of them yeah you know, is made okay. to match the amplifier in the tube okay well, let's let's see what all you got here oh this is one of the models they used to go by to build yeah. And you can see that network that you were just looking oh, yeah. at right here in the front. Network, this yeah. is the band switch. So uh, at the same time you're switching the input network, you're also switching the output network. Right, right. There, so. and these are what, uh, 3 500 These are 3-500s, these, yeah, this is the AL82. So uh -huh. uh, okay. but basically all three amps are the same except for this tube chassis here. So yeah. they all have the same power. So that's pretty good. Yeah, these these uh, squirrel cages, they move a tremendous amount, amount of air for the noise, yeah. Yeah. The noise level that they have. So. And they, we force it down into that chassis, and it comes up around the tubes. And, of course, the ceramic tubes, the 1500 ceramic tube, it goes up through the fins. So yeah. it keeps it really nice and cool. So this is the beautiful work, man. I mean, it just this is a pretty imp amplifier here with we the 3D. Yeah, we wind all yeah. these coils. Um, you build the capacitors. Build the capacitors and stuff like that here. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's very little bit uh, about the amplifier that we don't uh, make ourselves. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, so, so we got various parts here. Right now, the 80, okay. You can see this is the uh, ATR 30. Oh man, that is a beautiful tuner. And uh, you see this. This is similar to the MFJ roller inductor. Uh -huh. uh, we make we actually wind this ourselves as yeah. well. But you can see what this is made of. This is a, a quarter inch. Uh, look, looks about 063 uh, copper that's silver plated. Yeah. And then all the components are also silver plated. That roller inductor, you guys make this roller inductor. We make this, yeah. We make yeah. this, we wind this, this everything we wind here. So we've got a silver plated uh, air core with a silver plated roller uh, rolling down it, so it makes a good contact. Yeah. And that is smooth too, man. That, that, that's just really, really a smooth air. And you've got the, uh, you got, you got your, your yeah, caps the in there. Yeah. Air variables that we, we yeah. uh, put together and, and just basically a, a switch for the different coax outputs and then a balance for a ladder line. Very nice, very nice. Uh-huh. Yeah. Here's this is the back of uh either I guess the roller inductor or the uh 
That's the back of the roller inductors. In the front, yeah. Uh, this the A and H you were talking about will look similar to this. This is the A B. This is this is A D B. I've got one of these with the single uh three inch five hundred. This is, of course, missing the power supply. Missing the power supply transformer. Yeah. But you have the tank circuit and all there. And see, similar, uh, similar situation with the input circuit, except they're in the back of the amplifier on this yeah. one. Band switch up front, input network in the back. So, But all the amplifiers basically have the same circuitry. They just right. get a little bit bigger, yeah. larger tube, larger power supply, stuff like that. Okay. All right. Here's the transformers. Oh, man, some... That's like, that's that's what we have in the ADB. Pretty uh, pretty heavy transformer. <clears throat> pretty nice transformer. What's the voltage out on those uh, transformers? About uh, fifteen hundred or so, or two thousand? ADB. No, it runs around twenty seven hundred AC output. Then when it gets rectified, it jumps up to around thirty, uh, thirty one, thirty two, okay. like that. So anytime you rectify, oh, probably twenty. Yeah, it's going to put it up one point four or something times that. So all right. <coughs> this is a this is a new one. Yeah, this is a new unit that he's testing. Um, AL82. He's testing. With the two three five hundreds in it, and you see he's got the cover. Okay. Is that to uh, hold down any kind of interlock switch or anything? You got an interlock switch? On yeah. Don't get too close. <laughs> that one runs thirty six hundred volts on the plate. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. And. uh I see you got your bird watt meter up here, and I, do you have a kilowatt load or something? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. There, out of the way, so it's very in, yeah. in glamorous, so you would keep it out of the way. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, um, that interlock switch is really yeah. neat to have, isn't it? Yeah, so, it yeah. Yeah, about 3,000 volts floating around, maybe, you know? Uh, yeah, that's an input circuit. This also is an input circuit and the filament choke. This is for the 811 and 811H. So you can see the relay circuit and um, where you jumper it to change it from 110 now volts. This to relay, what's the, what are these relays for here? These are transmit receiver relays. Yeah, you know, right. One of the things, you know, I've been here 50 something years, used to homebrew a lot of stuff, but we use big relays, man, to switch stuff, you know. And well, we did I'm, amazed, I'm amazed that little small relays like this can handle a kilowatt. Well, we did that too. We had large, clunky relays, okay, and then the disadvantage of that, they're kind of slow. Uh, but one of the things we've done, even with the larger relays, you run into the problem of hot switching, which they're naturally going to do by themselves if you don't control it. But we're using two individual relays. And we have a little circuit here that's going to time delay the relay so that the output of the amplifier makes connection before the input. So you don't get any power on the output relay until the input one closes. So you don't get any of the arcing. So And then when it, when it unkeys, it does it in the opposite order. It'll unkey the input relay and then unkey the out one. So you don't get any arcing across the relays, which makes the life of the relay a lot greater. So these are these are 16 amp relays with double contacts. So eight amps each contact. So you're actually having two contacts on the output instead of just one, which gives you double the receive capability. Sometimes the, amp the relays will leave lose the receive capability because of the contact and I can make them again. But we actually have two on each relay. So now you've got two contacts making instead of just one on the receive side. So that helps a lot. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, well, wait, 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 what are we building over here? Is this a ballon? Is that a ballon or something? Or? Now, that is a one-to-one -one current ballon. Okay. Actually, you see, that's the one for a dipole. We use the same setup for, for the current ballon. And once you see the two wires she's putting in there now, you've got those ferrite beads wrapped around that RG303 coax. Oh, see it now. Uh, can, can, I see, can I hold one of those uh, with the beads there, please? One of the things? Yeah. I, I didn't see the beads at first, but they're, they're, covered, they're covered with shrink, shrink wrap. And that'll get folded up into the 30s and put inside that pipe. And, yeah. uh, of course, you've got, I think you've got like 50 or 60 beads there, yeah. something like that. And that, that coax, that's that RG303. That and it's a Teflon. Uh, dielectric inside makes it very. Uh, I've, I've built some balance with that stuff, and I mean it's amazing that small stuff with the Teflon, it, it's rated like uh, maybe 2,000 watts yeah, at 30 megs or something, you know. The Teflon, man, you can get that yeah. thing super hot. It's not even going to affect it. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I didn't realize the uh, per, the uh, 
little beads were that small and you just got a bunch of them on there about 50 on there and he'd shrink them he'd shrink them down on that and uh now does this fit inside what you're making there oh you're gonna fold it into thirds oh okay it's, it's, i don't know if you can see it on the camera but so you'll fold that in thirds and stick it down in here and try to hook it all up and like that say that's a, that's for a dipole but we also make one with a coax connector on the other end. So you can just yeah. slot it, drop into a series with your antenna if you need to. Okay, cool. Yeah. And you see there's some coax there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's some good coax here. Yeah, it is, it is. Here's your plate choke for uh, your 811 amp, yeah, it looks like. Yeah, tube chassis where the sockets are mm -hmm. and uh, the feedback network and then the... Uh, Parasitics. Um, parasitics on the top, that's right. Yep. And then the power supply. There's a power supply for one of them. And part of the, and tank, part of the tank circuit. circuit. Yeah. Right, they're on the same PC board. Yeah. And you can see that's what she's building, parasitic uh, suppressors right uh -huh. there. And then this lady is building a switching power supply for like the ALS 606 and stuff like that. And you can see this okay. is the circuit board. Here. Is that like a 50 volt supply or 48? It's, or it's or 50 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts negative. Uh, for all the components inside the unit. All right, so 50, uh, 50, 50 for the finals. How many amps? Uh, 25 amps. 25 amps. Yeah. 50, yeah. Okay. That's what it normally runs, 25 at 50 volts. Uh -huh. And then, you, of course, you have a 12 volt circuits for the chips and all that stuff. Sure. Like that. So okay. Okay. We'll make it. We'll make it through okay. What? ALS 600. This is the solid state AL 600 solid amplifier. State, right, and you see, she's, uh, these are low-pass filters on the top. We're switched in by the relays. And then under that, you can see the PA section right there with the finals on it. Well, is that some type of thermal cutoff or thermal, something? That is a thermal switch on the side of the heat sink. And when it gets above 170, I believe, degrees, it's going to just click off and pre prevent the amplifier uh, from that, Does that amp have a fan or anything in it? I, it I does. It's on the, yeah, it does. It's on the back side of the chassis. And you can see that's why that PA is wrapped in that aluminum because it's it's feeding air right through it oh, and it comes I'll out the, the side. See the heat there. Kind yeah. of like a little bit of yeah. And this is a, one of the linear power supplies for that amplifier. Linear. Okay, yeah, linear power supply. Linear. I mean, a huge yeah. transformer. Right. Not, uh, switching. not switching. So, uh, I guess you could think of it as analog. But that's, I guess. Uh, is that a uh, solid state amp? It is. The 606 and the 1306 are really very similar, but uh, you Probably. add. You add another PA. So this is the basically the PA we're talking about here. Uh, Which so one is this? This is a, a 606 PA. So and power wise, how much? Power wise, this is six, 600 watts. 600 watts. But then for the 1306, all we're going to do is we're going to add another one. Oh, you're going to put two of them in there. We're going to put I two of them side by side, yeah. and then the power supply will have two power supplies, one each for each one. So basically, you're just doubling everything. What do you do? You parallel the output or something? How do you? We run it into it. We run it into a combiner, combiner circuit, yeah. and and uh, then run it through a low-pass filter, just okay. like just like the other. So I'll show you that. Yeah, gotcha. Gotcha. Big old transformers, man. Those things are heavy. Yeah. This is a this is a nice uh, transformer, man. and that's that's not a cheap transformer either. I mean, there's there's a lot of a lot in here, man. It's heavy, and we ship those in like three boxes. So yeah. The transformer does not come in. And here's one of the power supplies we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You see, you saw the single unit. This is for the 1306. So we're going to have two individual power supplies, 50 volts, one for each PA. So, oh, okay. So, and that's why on the, on the uh, 1306 you have two current meters, one for each one of these. Power supplies. So I, I'm not real familiar with that, but I'm, 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 I, I, I guess if a power supply just quit working, you'd still have half power with the other. Not really. Not no, really. it would not. No, no because uh, because you're going through that combiner circuit, uh, the amplifier is going to shut off. Anytime it detects a power output between the two phase is greater than 50 watts, okay. it it just shuts it off. So okay. That means All right. Well, problems. I learned something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finished units for that PA. Now, what, what is okay? The, the 1306 with two. You see the two PAs. Two PAs. And we'll flip it around here. We can see everything else. So you got the two PAs that are under the bottom, and then they come up. This is your combiner circuit, and it feeds yeah. right into the low pass filter section. Yeah. And uh, that's basically it's very simple. I mean, you take the power coming in, you split it right here, and you go to the two different PAs, 
it amplifies it and it combines it right back together and then runs it to the low pass filter. You know, that is that is so pretty. Even if I wasn't a ham, I think I'd buy me one of these, take the cover off, and just set it on my coffee table for people to look at. Yeah. And then right here is the 606. Basically, it's half of this amplifier. Uh, and yeah, I don't think I have this one operational. Let me see if I do. Kaboom. No. Yeah, don't, don't say that. <laughs> 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 okay, so basically, what the uh, the 1306 and the 606, I have uh, internal circuits that will control the pan. So, as I switch my radio, you see, if I go to 160 meters, it's automa automatically going to 160. No, how does it to switch like that? Does it send some type data signal, cap signal, or something? Kenwood, ICOM, Yesu, I'll use different signals, but this one it will accept all three of them. To, it's yeah, kind of that's kind of neat. For instance, if I had this thing remoted with a rig pie, I could change bands, and the amplifier would change automatically. Right, and we also have a device where you can do that over the Internet. So you'll be able to remotely control the amplifier through an Internet connection. So if you have that with your radio and you control the amplifier too, so... So you can do that, or you can manually change it just like this, and you can hear the low-pass filters yeah. changing in and out. But yeah, that'll be something that's uh, new. That'll be our newest thing. Would be the internet control, which works with that. Uh, was it the MFJ one two three four? The Rick Power one two three four. Right. Yeah. So you'll be able to change everything remotely and operate a complete remote station at, at uh, 1300 watts if you wanted to. Okay. Great. All right. Well, hey, uh, what's your call? KC5 NIS. NIS. KC5 NIS. Okay. Well, great. Thanks for showing us around. And, uh, well, right hand, right hand shake. All right. Well, hey, that was a, a quick tour of Ameritron, and that was kind of neat. Uh, Martin, you got you got some good stuff going here. Let me see if I can join you and Katie. Let me think here how I can do this. Let me see if I can get in here. Maybe, maybe that right there will work. I'll just get over here like that. There we go. So hey, hey you're uh, in Martin's living room. So Martin, did yeah, you uh, did you did learn anything? Very nice tour. Did did you learn anything, uh, Martin, by that tour? <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> you know, you've got so much stuff going, and you've grown so much. I, I'm I'm sure it's pretty hard to keep up with everything. But I I think you're pretty involved in most of your products, aren't you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm pretty involved. Most of my managing is done through reports and talking and every once in a while I go over and see what's going on. Uh, but yeah. you might have been through the plants more time than I have. Well, I, I feel like I'm almost an expert there. I could just about give the tour. So if you ever need anybody to, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm able to come down and and be a tour guide for you. Well, you knew you knew a lot about that about that stuff. Yeah, and you know it's it's just a lot of fun. Of course, that's been my life uh, all these years too, and yours, you know, uh, for so many years. And uh, uh, even though uh, you know we're ham radio operators, we've learned a whole lot about electronics and radio and things like that over the years. You know. We learned some the hard way and some the easy way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the the ones that sticks is the stuff we learned the hard way. <clears throat> yeah. There were sections of it that you didn't get a chance to go through, which was um, winding the coils, you know, all those yeah. slot tune coils. We now, make all of them. Now that where was that? Is that a different building? Uh, no, that's it. That was in the back. They oh, really? Turns count. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we missed uh, we missed that part there. But uh, you make all your coils, and uh, do you, do you do the silver plating there also? The silver plating we don't do because of the EPA problems. We send uh -huh. the silver plate off. But you know those uh, input slug tune coils. We make those too. Oh, that's, that's right. You make you make your tubes. coils and put the slugs in them and everything. Yeah. Because you know, I probably. I, you know, used to uh, that would be a common problem, a common uh, item that you you might could get for TV or radio. Did they still make that stuff, or are you having to actually make your own? Well, we used to buy them from uh, a company, 
and they decided to go to retire and go out of business. So we bought all their stuff and now we make them ourselves. Well, that is, uh, it's so cool. And many of the parts that you make, uh, for instance, those uh, tune input coils we're talking about right now, you take the form, you put the slug in them, uh, you, you wind the wire around them. Uh, man, they look like they're made in a factory. You, you guys do a great job. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what a Nixie tube is? I do. You got, uh, you got something with a Nixie tube? <clears throat> well, you know, Nixie tubes were the... Uh, digital displays before uh plasma and lcds and leds yeah uh, <clears throat> now the turns counters that we use to count the turns on those input calls is pre nixie tubes and you don't even know what a pre nixie tube turns counter looks like and, and I know have. you don't because I didn't. Now, your turns counter back, I remember seeing it, uh, Not, of course, not this trip. Uh, does it have a counter on it? Yeah, it's a digital counter. It's, not, it's, a Nixie, not, it's not a Nixie <laughs> tube counter, is it? It's before a Nixie tube. Well, I'm trying to think what that would be. What would that be? Just a mechanical <laughs> gauge? Well... Remember the magic eye tube? I was going to bring the magic eye up a minute ago. I bet Katie doesn't. I bet Katie's never seen a magic eye tube. Uh, that way before. Oh, I'm way clueless on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the but the magic eye tube, the display was on the end of a tube. Uh huh. <clears throat> and that's what the old pre Nixie tubes looked like. It was on the end of a tube, and they were one digit and arrange in a circular pattern and that's what the turns counter was hey hey i want to show you something martin see if you martin let's we'll show katie we'll show katie what a what a itube is see if i can get a close-up of it oh. <clears throat> that's called a magic itube right there wow when it's it's when it's on katie you would be thinking it was winking at you oh interesting yeah it's so it's, uh, a, it's interesting it's a flirty tool <laughs> yeah it's, it's a little eye katie and that little eye looks like this and a little eye will close up on it man it sounds a little creepy if you ask yeah, me <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> We used to use those for power syncing when we'd sync an airplane 400 cycles power. Yeah. Uh, to shore power. You couldn't uh -huh. just plug shore power up to an airplane while it was running unless you were synced. And we used what? a magic eye tube in the in the sinker. You could, wow. So you could watch it close off. You could, you could then close the power off on them. Wow. Man, so, so that's something. That. Hey, Martin, we'll uh, we'll get next time I get down here, we'll have to get a, some some video of the uh, coil winding there and uh, uh, and and the other things we missed, of course. The other video we've got that we're just not gonna have time tonight to run is, of course, I mean, we go through it, building all your other products from your uh, I don't know your uh, antenna tuners to antenna analyzers to everything and we even uh we even look at you building the capacitors uh in your other uh facility there building the capacitors and uh just everything man you guys do everything yeah. here <clears throat> tom it, you know yeah. <clears throat> another thing that you missed was how we build air wound coils you, were, you yeah. remember the yeah. air wound yeah. coils with three or four plastic ribs that separated the windings yeah <clears throat> you the next time you come by you should take a look at that um because we have a mandrel that holds the plastic ribs and a transformer that puts 600 amps through the wire to heat it up so when it rotates and winds, it melts into those plastic ribs. You would be fascinated <laughs> yeah. at that. And I've seen that, and we will uh, cool. we'll get that. <laughs> we'll get that. 
Hey, Martin, I'm going to go. I'm going to put the phone line up here in case somebody wants to call in and say hello to Katie or to you and just talk. So let me put the phone number up here. And uh, if, if anybody out there wants to call us, um, just dial that number. And um, welcome. This service is provided by freeconferencecall.com. Let me turn that down. There okay. So uh, well, the music should conference. start here in a minute. There we go. Now, as long as we have music, that means we don't have anybody. Oh, okay. <laughs> let, me, so, let me talk a little bit more about whining. Yeah, call. yeah, talk about Everybody. it. And in the, mean, hey, in the meantime, uh, you guys call us, 712-775-7270. Uh, you got to put the code in there and uh, hit the pound sign. Also, we've got phone lines in 65 countries, so people like Tony down in Australia can call us. Yeah, y'all call and talk to us. Uh, we'd like to talk to you guys. But anyway, what I was saying, Tom, was you know once it winds that wire around that pla those plastic strips, uh -huh. it it's so tight you can't get that that wound coil off of that form. So what we have to do is that mandrel that that wire is wound on collapses mm -hmm. collapses then you can pull the wire the, the coil off of that form yeah we'll uh we'll surely get that uh next time and um uh, like like i was just saying earlier you got so much in here we missed a lot of it this trip we we spent a few hours with you and uh had to get back home but uh we'll we'll uh we'll get that again next time and you know uh one of the things I think we may have a caller. It got quiet. Do we have a caller? Uh, this is uh, Ron, BE5RS, uh, calling in from Saskatoon. I've been just uh, watching the show tonight. Hey, in how the you Hamshack doing? And, uh, um, yeah, back to you. Okay, I want to make sure our audio sounds okay. Does it sound okay coming back to you? Uh, yes, it does. It oh, sure does. Okay. Sometimes it's a little loud. Uh, okay, VE5RS up in Canada, and what's the name there? Uh, name is Ron, Romeo Oscar November. Okay, hey, Ron. Uh, hey, Ron, I, I don't recognize your call. Are you kind of new to our show? Um, I've been, uh, yeah, well, kind of. I haven't phoned in before. Okay. I've been on the chat room a couple of times, but uh, I've been following it. and. Uh, okay. Cool. I've uh, even uh, met you down in Dayton too, so that oh, okay. was uh, kind of nice. Well, very good. Hey, you want to say anything to uh, Katie or Martin? Well, uh, sure. I'll say hi to Katie too. I seen Katie at um, there was a AWRL uh, Western uh, I don't know ham convention in uh, yeah Kobe, Dennis KL seven HRO Alaska. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, hi, anyway, Ron. Um, nice to hear you tonight. Hi. Yeah, good. Well, I was at that uh, Cody, Wyoming uh, a couple years ago. Oh, the, that's right. And, yeah, great. Yeah. So that was, I knew your, your uh, call sounded you familiar. Uh, now, thank you. Now it places it. So <laughs> Dwayne just went, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I've, been, I've been down to Dayton about five wow. times in the last seven years. So Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, awesome. but uh, okay. it's good to... Uh, check in and, and listen to the show it's uh one of my favorites well great oh, that's awesome Look at there. thank you Look at there. hey katie hey. we have a part there's a person out there this is his favorite show don't that make you feel good absolutely yeah <laughs> hey hey ron this is martin hi mark <laughs> mark that's martin it's, that's it, martin it's great i i yeah. never thought i'd phone in but i thought well, i'm kind of i seen the number up there and i thought well I'm going to go for it. All right. Well, for, for, let me let me ask the question from Canada. From Canada, can you just dial that 712 number, or did you have to dial an international number? I dialed the 712 number, Okay. and it seemed to work quite well. Okay, very good. Very good. So um, you guys have a good evening, and I, I don't have any other questions. It was kind of interesting that uh, um, equipment to your going around and looking at there and uh 
anyway, but uh, I'll be uh, I'll just be a listener uh, anyway. And uh, thanks for doing the show. Well, okay, Ron. And, uh, thank you. Enjoy. Thanks to all of you. Thank you for thanks, Ron. calling in, man. Come, you back. Call in anytime, Ron. Yeah. And come yeah. Say yeah, I'd like to wait back, dating. but I guess you can't see me. But okay. Yeah. Uh, take, care. <laughs> take care. So have a good night. So yeah, I hear hey, my, hey, uh, uh, my friend Dennis is on there. He's from South Dakota, but he's up in Alaska now. KL seven HRO. You still there, Dennis? Yeah. Hi, Katie. Hello, Martin. I'm up in Two Rivers, Alaska, about twenty five miles northeast of Fairbanks now. Man, we are wow. really we are really getting out. You're like five nine plus ten over here tonight, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, that that good old phone. Alaska, Dennis. Yeah, Martin. I'm I'm just out of Fairbanks. Yeah, what are you doing up there? We moved up there. Mm. Oh. We're, re we're retired. <laughs> well, he he yeah. probably wanted to try you know gold hunting or whatever you do up here. You know when you no no hunting and fishing. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, well, watch out. Dwayne, for that. Dwayne said because it wasn't cold enough in Wyoming and South Dakota. <laughs> Get to move up there. Well, be careful, man. They got bars up here. <laughs> I'm impressed that you retired in Alaska. I had a I had a friend that went up here a couple years ago. He and his wife took a motorcycle trip from Memphis to Alaska. He went all the way up to the uh, what is the Arctic Circle. And they would wow. camp out. They would camp out on the way, and they lost their GPS. I think a bear got it or ate it or something. Oh. Yeah. You know, I've watched some YouTubes on uh, people who have uh, spent the night and camped out in a tent in, like, you know, minus degrees. It's pretty incredible. Too cold for a tent. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, with a call like KL7HRO, does that have any significance here? No, I used to be N7HRO and WD4HRO. All right. And you know what? We, we've we got a friend that gets on here, WB8HRO. So uh, there's a bunch of HROs out there. I, I think HRO should give you guys some kind of prize or something. <laughs> Yeah, I'll mention me that to my too. Boss. But you know, the day I I got my general, I had WD four HRO, and in the mobile, I worked WD nine HRO, oh, and man. he had just upgraded the same day. Oh, that that's right? cool! That wow, what are the cool. odds of that happening? Well, I, you know, hey, it, for something like that, I really think that there should be some kind of HRO uh, plaque or gift or something. Or Katie, you're gonna have to check into that. All right, I'll look into off it for sure. Yeah, I heard somebody mention uh, Australia. I used to be VK6 Zulu Delta Charlie. I was stationed oh, wow. with the Navy out in the outback. Navcom stay Harold E. Holt in Western Australia. Wow. Okay, well, cool. We've got several uh, Australian stations uh, or uh, several people in Australia watching tonight. <laughs> Dennis. Well, tell us. Dennis, where did where did you grow up? You sound you talk kind of slow. I'm from Chicago originally. Oh man! But I lived in Tennessee. You know, oh. y'all come back now. There here. it is, right there. And then <laughs> there it is in Australia. It was good day, Mike. <laughs> there it is. It's the Tennessee. That's what did it, Martin. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Hey, hey, Dennis. Uh, Chris is asking in the chat room how much sun is. How much sun do you have this time of year up there? Uh, the sun comes up about 8 o'clock and goes down about 5 o'clock. And in about a month, the sun won't come up at all. Oh. That's not bad. How long does that last? For about five months. Up, oh with, my when that happens, oh. you don't go bar hopping and ask a lady to spend the night. Because <laughs> it's about a four-month night. Oh yeah, I can imagine so, man. That'd be a, uh, that would be a lot of long bar hopping too, man. Uh, you know. Yeah, we're way out in the sticks though, too far from the bars. Yeah, well, you may be closer to the bars than you think. 
Well, it's nice to hear you, Dennis. I hope you guys are doing well up there. Yeah, we're we're making it, Katie. Well, well we miss you on our nets. Well, if the band's ever open, we'll be back on. Sounds good. Well, yeah. thanks for calling in. It's good to hear from you. Okay, Katie. We'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Do we have another caller? Hey, Tom. It's me, 109 QDS. Uh, who is that? N N nine N nine Q D S N nine Q D S. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm pretty good, pretty good. You know, I got a place down there in Tennessee, not too far from you. And also, hello to Katie, as uh, I saw her uh, at uh, the Milwaukee Ham Fest. That's so, right. How are you doing, Keith? Pretty good. I can't complain. Excellent. So I just thought Did I'd, you have? I just thought I'd oh. call in and say hello to everybody. That's all. Great. Well, nice to hear you, and thanks for uh, thanks for calling in. And it was uh, thanks for reminding me that I got to meet you at Superfest. That was kind of fun. I uh, uh, Keith, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good time. Yeah, Keith checks in the net down here pretty regularly. Uh, uh, yeah. on forty meters there. Hey, Keith, how are we coming in right up there right now, man? You got a good copy on us? Yeah, no problem. Five nine all the way. All right, but, very uh, good, man. I like this. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I. Uh, uh, you know, I tried to get you on the uh, the forty meter net earlier today, and I just couldn't hear a thing. Well, did you you knew we moved right down to seventy eight? Yeah, I know you moved down. Okay. Yeah, I know you moved down, and I I followed you down there. Okay. But uh, I didn't. I still didn't hear a, a thing. But uh, yeah, the band's the band hasn't been very very good up here by me. Yeah, we got to get Mark known. You know, we need to get him get his rig pie set up. They're at the office. He's got he's got these big <coughs> amplifiers. He's got these majorly big amplifiers. He's got radios. He's got uh, extended double zips up ninety feet in the air. Martin, why can't we get you on the air? Well, you know, I heard you on, and I was going to give you a call. Uh, but I couldn't find my microphone. It wasn't plugged into the radio, oh, and I couldn't man. find it. So you, you actually heard us tonight? Did you listen tonight? No, it wasn't tonight. Oh, okay. It was, uh, I don't know, a <laughs> week or two ago. Well, call me on CW. Keep it down to decent speed, like 13, 14 words a minute, and, and I, I, I'll take you, you know. Okay, how about five words a minute? Well, I can, oh do, I can surely do five, you know. In fact, I can send a real fast, too, you know. I mean, uh, I, you know, I'm not, I haven't done a lot of CW in, in years, but it's like riding a bicycle. I can still do it around, you know, 11, 12, 13 words a minute. Uh, you okay. know, I, I was doing 20, but, you know, oh, no, you I'm get... I'm talking about sending to me at five words a minute. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, hey, Martin. Now you sell this little code reader. I know you guys got the code reader, so all you got to do is just turn that thing on and hold it up there by the speaker, and yeah, it, it might yeah. copy. It might copy what I send. Well, you know, you know so close, but it's hard to you hear. Know, for you. A person, you know, for a person who has all the uh, radio gear in the world, uh, you think you can find a microphone, uh, cut the <laughs> plug off of something, and you know, stuff it in the connector and start talking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, my microphone was was in the plastic bag behind the radio. I found it. I just never plugged it in. <laughs> well, I and, came down know, to hear the uh, net, you know but what? I was too that, late that's, in the day. I really, it. I mean, I, I understand that. That's where I keep all my microphones when I'm not using them in a plastic bag. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we're so close together, it's just hard for us to hear. And yeah. Katie probably so far from you so she can't hear too <laughs> oh well, we usually can hear well, tom okay good. i just um, need to get into the shack at the right time that's my problem <laughs> are you in the same time you know, zone? no 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 um, we're behind an hour so yeah if i so, get him on 40 i should be able to hear him just fine because so, we've got that big beam up 100 feet up there who the, who i don't have a beam i got to no we beam. do oh you do yeah you do but see y'all gonna have to listen an hour earlier because you're an hour earlier than me right oh i know well that's yeah and my my problem is when i get down to tennessee though i'll just go right over the top of time so oh yeah such is life on that 
We had a problem with, the, you know, uh, like this weekend piece. for sweepstakes, all the close-in states, you know, getting Colorado or Nebraska and what have you. It's always a little more challenged. That's why we, you know, usually have to shoot for the evening on 40 or 80 if we can reach them. But, yeah, it's always hard, to, you know, to get the close-in people. Far away, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Tom, I'll be uh, I'll be actually be uh, in uh, down there uh, in a week, and I'll be down there through the holidays. Where are you going to be in the Memphis area? No, unfortunately, I'll be I can be, but I'm <laughs> going to be uh, over towards uh, Gatlinburg, uh, oh. Sevierville. Well, Pick let me George. let me tell you, that's not close. Yeah. <laughs> That's not close. <laughs> Tennessee's about Tennessee's about. It's only about, three hours away. Yeah, Tennessee's about five or six hundred miles long, man. I mean, I, I think Tennessee's <laughs> bigger than Texas, to tell you the truth, man. It just they don't draw it that big on the map. I think we're a little uh, bit. Uh, <clears throat> your vision's uh, playing games with you. Yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Tennessee covers from Arkansas all the way over to Georgia. And uh, North North Carolina, West Virginia, long state. It it, it is, and you know yeah, you know cool. you know. But one of the things it's longer than you think because I'll tell you something. When we go over to North Carolina, uh, Martin, and we're on I forty, and we're heading east on I forty, and you get over there past uh, the, about the Tennessee line, I forty goes south, and then I forty goes west, and then I forty goes north. That sucker well, goes, it goes all different directions, man. So I think you're really driving more than 500 miles. Yeah. Takes a long time to drive 500 miles. And, and, and it's just really, I mean, you know, you, you're driving, you're tired, you've been driving for 10 hours, you, you're heading east, you look at the GPS and it says you're going west. And you kind of <laughs> question, you kind of question that, but that's the way that road goes. That's funny. Yeah. That's yeah. Beautiful. You know, time I'm going to get out of here. North. I'm going to let you get another caller on the line and okay. talk to them. So, All uh, right, Keith. I'll say seven threes to you, seven threes to Katie, and also Martin. See you later. You guys All have right. a fantastic hey. evening it's and enjoy. Fun. All right. Well, thank Thanks you. Thanks for calling in. Thanks, Diane. Thanks so much. All right. Uh, Katie sure. Martin, stand by just a second. I've got to do something All right, right here. i got to do something right here. Step up your gift-giving game this year and get your favorite ham and ICOM transceiver. ICOM offers a variety of high-performance and innovative products. Make the most out of this holiday season with one of these ICOMs today. Give your favorite ham the SDR they really want, the IC7610. This high-performance SDR has the ability to pick out the faintest of signals, even in the presence of stronger adjacent signals. It is a direct sampling software-defined radio that will change the world's definition of an SDR transceiver. It has RF direct sampling, an independent dual receiver, and dual digit select. Ham for the holidays, ICOM is changing the way entry-level HF is designed. The IC7300 is a high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design and it will far exceed your expectations. It has RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, large 4.3 inch color screen, a real-time spectrum scope, and an SD memory card slot. The IC9700 is at the top of every ham's wish list this holiday season. Keep your competitive contesting edge with faster processors, higher input gain, higher display resolution, and a cleaner signal. ICOM's IC9700 is the pinnacle of perfection. It has a 4.3 color touchscreen, dual watch operation and full duplex operation in satellite mode, real-time high-speed spectrum scope and waterfall display, and a voice recording playback function. Visit www.icomamerica.com amateur for more information on ICOM radios. LDG Electronics provides state-of-the-art antenna tuners for every amateur need. From QRP to QRO, fixed stations, portable and remote, an LDG tuner will match your radio to your antenna using our lightning fast, proprietary tuning algorithms. LDG is a family owned and operated company dedicated to bringing innovative quality products to the amateur market. All LDG products carry a full two year warranty that is fully transferable. Support is only a phone call or email away. We're always here to help you. Visit us on the web at ldgelectronics.com. All right, we're back and we've got uh, we've got Mike on down under. 
<laughs> How are you doing, Mike? Nick. Good afternoon, Tom. I'm doing pretty well, thank you. Oh, well, um, good, man. Hey, just you, you coming in loud just and doing clear. My regular Wednesday lunchtime viewing of uh, this program. Yeah, you're coming in loud and clear, and uh, we've got a you know we've got a number of viewers down there in Australia. Um, uh, I've had several set of pictures. Pictures of watching the TV. Yeah, they're on a big screen TV. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> take a picture. Take a picture and put it on our Facebook group someday. I like to. Okay. I like to see. That. I'd like to I've see what we a... look like. Uh, what we look like down there. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, hey, so Mike, are are you in town or kind of out of town? Are you? No, well, actually, um, <clears throat> I'm on the, the southern outskirts of Sydney. Okay. Um, haven't got much up, just a, a long while because I live in an apartment complex. Uh -huh. So um, uh -huh. I've got uh, an MFJ tuner all cranked up to uh, to that. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, uh, this is uh, <clears throat> where I've retired to, so it's quite nice. Well, good. Hey, it's been a long time since I, I've been to Australia. But let me ask you: Do you ever, um, do you ever see any uh, uh, kangaroos down there? They, 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 they actually come up to your house or anything? <laughs> no, no. Yeah? You know, I don't know about <laughs> Martin. I don't know about you. Now, Ka I bet you Katie. Up. I bet you Katie has animals coming up to her house. I mean, we even have deer. <laughs> we live in a city, but we have so many deer that come up in our yard, and they're always eating our flowers and our our shrubs. It, you, it looks awful. But do you believe that we also have deer here? Uh huh. Um, they got imported years ago, and um, they live in the uh, nature reserve. Yeah. Not too far from where I live, so we do see them. Mm. Uh, kangaroos, they're more um, uh, an animal either further down south or uh, out west. Um, yeah, we get the lizards and the snakes and all so, that sort of thing yeah, here. So but, I, um, I remember, I remember uh, reading about how the deer were kind of exported and put into... Uh, into Australia, that's kind of cool. Uh, I wonder, I just wonder if we brought a bunch of, a uh, bunch of uh, the Australian species up here and let them loose, you know, like the kangaroos, if they would multiply and run around here. I don't know. It's, I'd certainly <laughs> like to actually see the deer go from where they are because um, our landscape is not suited to hard hoofed animals yeah and um unfortunately they call cause a lot of erosion and stuff like that so uh but anyhow well whatever we have got them and then um yeah they make uh, interesting entertainment did you say uh did you say you got your station kind of torn apart right now or are you actually operating um <clears throat> my station is pretty much torn apart just the one hf antenna uh -huh. and um i'm afraid that the state's just beyond my uh, reach with, with anything but um phone or irlp well do you hear do you hear the states much down there yeah i do actually but the thing is i haven't got the power to get back i mean the people that get back are running you know, the uh, beams have a lot of power, and I'm running sort of like 50 watts. And okay. um, 50 watts into a long wire doesn't do too much. What is uh, what is your uh, power limit in Australia? Uh, we're limited to, um, in these city areas, 400 watt CRP. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but if you get out in the bush... You can get up to fifteen hundred watts CRP. Oh, okay. So they have restrictions. If you're in the city, it's less. Yeah. Okay. I knew there's a lot of uh, uh, places in Europe where they're running like four hundred watts. Uh, I guess it's very similar to your situation. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I guess it. I guess it's just you know, you don't want to fry your next door neighbor kind of thing. 
Well, you know, you 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 you're talking about your 50 watts, and uh, and you know, I I don't know how long you've been hemming, but when that when that sunspot cycle comes around again, uh, you'll you'll be oh, able yeah, to. Oh yeah, I know. You'll be able to talk been, to the states um, uh, real easy with what you've yeah. got there. Well, I've been a ham for about forty years, so I've been around. Y- yeah. Hey, hey, Martin. We had a uh, I don't know about a month ago. I had an Australian station check in our forty meter net Tuesday night. Uh, oh, wow! We've, uh, we've had his, we've had Australia check in and we've had South Africa check in. So <laughs> that wasn't bad, wow. you know, for a uh, forty meter or forty wow. meter net. That's there. good. Right. That's good. Anyway, I'll let you get on. I'll just say hello to Martin and Katie, and uh, goodbye to Martin and Katie, and let you get on with uh, other calls. Okay. Well, hey, thanks, uh, Mike, for calling in from Australia. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Not a, nice not to a hear problem. You. All right. And so I'll, uh, uh, I'll take a photo and. Put it up on my Facebook up in your uh, Facebook page. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Katie, how do you spell? Okay. Thank you. How does Dwayne spell his first name? Is it D E? No, he's D W. Oh, okay. Because we got another Dwayne on here that is, is not getting video. Yeah, that's that's Dwayne up in uh, Nova Scotia. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, he just need to re uh, refresh. Refresh. You'll probably yeah. get the video. Well, if he's not getting the video, he's not hearing me either. Looks like Martin, you're sinking into the couch over there. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Just I think it's my bedtime. Got moved way over, and I was trying to get him back. <laughs> All right. Well, hey. Okay. Well, we had fun tonight so far. It was it's, a good it's, time. It's nine seventeen here. It's real early yeah, for Katie. No, it's bedtime. It's not even supper time for Katie yet, but. You know, oh, no, I ate like three hours ago. Well, maybe Time we'll... change. I was hungry at 4.30 today. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, who's on the phone? G'day, Tom. It's Tony, VK3TNL, your second call from Australia. Tony. Hey, hey. Tony. we got another hey, Australian Tony. on. Hey, <laughs> hey, Tony. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yep. Beautiful and sunny down here at the moment. Nice and warm. Nice. Hey, yeah, you're this coming in. You're coming in a little. You're coming in a little weak, man. Turn your beam this way just a little bit more. <laughs> uh, hang on a minute. Hey, hey you're saving me now. Yeah, I, I got you good. Got you good. Good, good. Yep, nice and sunny down here at the moment, about ninety degrees, and I'm in Adelaide for work at the moment. Uh, so uh, very nice. Now, is that ninety degrees Fahrenheit or is that ninety degrees Celsius? Uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but it, sometimes it feels like 90 degrees Celsius. <laughs> yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Uh, I think we're going to have to take a winter vacation in Australia. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> oh, so 18 degrees here, so that sounds good. I'll take 90. Absolutely. Yeah. We don't get much snow here. Snow is uh, is a rarity in Australia. Right. Well, now, let's see, it's starting to be summertime down there now, right? How was your winter? Uh, winter wasn't too bad. It was, yeah, it was cold at times. It got down to zero, which I think is about 32, but yep. uh, not very, only about four times. Hmm. Okay. Now, hey, Tony, tell us again where you are in Australia. Are you on the, uh, are you on the western side or the eastern side? I'm on the east side, so near Melbourne. But, Melbourne, okay. um, at the moment, I'm in Adelaide, Adelaide for work, which is okay. a little bit further west. I got gotcha. you. Okay. <laughs> is you, it uh, about lunchtime there in Australia now? Sorry, Martin, what was that? Is it about lunchtime there? I think it's siesta. It's, it's past. It's nearly 2 o'clock. It's one yeah. fifty on Wednesday afternoon. Oh, it's, it's siesta okay. time, Martin. It's this time to take a nap down here. So, uh, t- t- Tony, are are you working? Tony, are you working at work right now, or are you are you home, or what's I your am. situation? No, no, I'm sitting in the car at, at working at the moment. Okay. Well, it's a great job when you can work and uh, and and watch our show. I like that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, Tony, do you hear the U.S. much on the uh, ham bands? I do, I do, yes. Um, 
I have a vertical and I've also got a, uh, a wire, but um, the US comes in quite strong, in particular in the evenings and during the night. Okay. Uh, what bands, Tony? Um, on most of them. So I hear them uh, pretty clearly on 80 metres, 40 metres and 20 metres. Wow, I'm impressed. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you a, are you a so, high power um, Tony? Are you a high power guy there, or just uh, what what, what uh, tell us a little about your setup? No, I'm just um, our maximum's 400 watts, but uh -huh. um, I don't operate much. About 100 watts is my maximum. I don't need much more power than that. Right. Well, that's what most people um, around. That's what most people here run. Uh, you know, most of the rigs now are 100 watts, and and uh, they 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 work well there. What kind of antenna are you yeah. using, Tony? Um, I've got a wire antenna, just a, um, a wire with a ICOM AH4 auto tuner, and uh -huh. um, I've also got a vertical antenna that's uh, multi-band, um, runs between 40 and 10 meters from okay. the UK. Okay, is that ground on it with radios? Uh, ICOM IC7100, and I've got an old Yaesu valve radio as well, which does up to 200 watts. Uh-huh. Okay. Hey, hey, let me ask this question, Tony. Do you have any MFJ equipment in your shack? Uh, believe it or not, I don't. Oh, <laughs> man. Well, you're going to have to get something or quit calling in. <laughs> I'm... I'm I'll be at I'll be at Hamvention next year, and I'll be planning on buying some from Martin. No worries at all. <laughs> well, very good, very good. And if you don't buy anything, maybe maybe Martin will just give you something, just so we can say that you have a MFJ product down there, right? <laughs> well, then I can well, post you... on Facebook with the MFJ equipment and um, advertise that there's plenty of it down in Australia. <laughs> well, hey, hey, be sure and come by and see us. We'll be up there again uh, doing our uh, live stream. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, Tony, be sure to come by and say hello to me, Tony. This is I'll do that, Martin and Tom, yes. So we'll definitely be calling by. Okay. Thanks All right. for calling so, um, in. It's nice to you, hear man. you tonight. Thank you. And to Katie as well. I missed you last time, Katie, so we'll uh, make sure we'll get there this year. Yeah, I hope so. I was bummed that I missed you this time. So hopefully this coming yeah, year we'll get to see you. Yep, that'd be fantastic. So I bought my um, a Zoom spot from HRO last time, so that's uh, that was a fantastic little device. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, I know a lot of people really enjoy that, and they, they keep uh, developing more and more related to that item, and now there's a new version, the NextGen, um, which is really pretty slick. It's, it's a really neat little device that people are really enjoying and having a lot of fun with, so very good. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll be looking forward to get one of those as well. Great. Well, hey, Tony, thank you for calling, man. I uh, enjoy talking to you every week, man. No worries it, at all. Thanks it for the makes show, it, guys. It makes Excellent us feel like again. our show is getting out, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. I'll head off and round up these kangaroos and uh, get back to All work. right, man. Go run those kangaroos <laughs> off, man. Hey, 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 Tony, you still there? Hi, Tony. I am. Hey Tony, Tony. Yep. Uh, hey Tony, uh, have you ever boxed a kangaroo yep. down here? You know, growing up or anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we have lots of kangaroos where I live, and uh, sometimes they like to box with the car. Oh, oh gosh. really? Oh. They come up and box the car, huh? Okay. Well. Well, you know, those things That's look true. like pretty tough hombres down there. I didn't know if you've ever, you know, I, I knew being a kid growing up, if you have a lot of kangaroos, you might just get out there and try. You know, I mean, sometimes we do stupid things and, you know, maybe. <laughs> no, have, I haven't been game because um, I reckon you'd come off second best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I well. think so. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Hey, Tony, thank you, man. Thanks. We'll see you. No worries, guys. Thanks for the chat and uh, we'll see Thanks. you in May. All right, we'll Sounds see you then. Right, Thanks, Tony. Bye. Bye. All right, well, that's cool, man. Look. Just never know what Tom's going to say. Yeah, we're, uh -oh. <laughs> we're, uh, we're getting into it.
we're getting into Australia tonight. Boy, our signal's really good tonight, man. That's right. Yeah. Fancy, hey, you know, fancy uh, internet. <laughs> you know, I do webcast. I webcast the net so people actually watch the net when they're talking. They can see the S meter and they can hear themselves. Oh, neat. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think I'm ready to go, guys. Tom, Tom's on the show. He talks like he's on radio. Yeah. <laughs> on, like on the radio, huh? Yeah. Well, guys, man, I've enjoyed it tonight. It's 9.26. It's probably yeah. about time to, to get off here. Martin, Thanks. I know it's your bedtime. <laughs> I'm going to go get me a snack, maybe watch a little TV. And, oh, and today, today is my Friday night because once we do the show, I don't have to do anything for a couple more days. And in about three days from now, I have to start planning next week. But uh, I've already got to jump on it. Martin, we've got the MFJ video next week if you want to be with us. Well, I would like to be with you, but I have to go to Jackson. I'm on some kind of a panel. Okay. There. Well, I, hey, I can put it off and we can run it another week if you'd like to be here when we do it. Would you like to, okay. would you like to be around when we do the uh, MFJ tour? Well, that would be nice. Okay. Uh, I think I'm <laughs> giving you the tour that would be kind of nice yeah that's right you were in there you 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 actually gave the tour so uh, yeah we'll hold off on that that just means that katie has got to come up with something for next week now katie i think Dwayne probably could do something if you know he could talk about you know his antennas well, or we dx can, or, yeah, or something well i'll be back from uh plano so i can give a little report on that maybe we can okay. talk about sweepstakes that'll be coming up the following weekend do oh. talk a little bit about contesting what do you think okay yeah he says mm, can he do okay. it do I yeah we can do us, it we'll do it together do i give us a thumbs up i'm looking give us a thumbs up oh well, there it is <laughs> okay all right i just want to make sure that we got a show lined up for next week okay so our show is uh already set for next week i'm counting on you all guys right. so I don't have to do anything now. I guess I guess I better not call in sick next week. Yeah, don't call in sick. Your sick time has already run out. I think you got. One I know or, I've used it up. I a think lot. you've got one or two more personal days left, but you've already used up all your vacation, and you've used up the sick time. It's a good the thing the new time. year's starting soon. Oh man, I forgot you about start that. Start fresh. I forgot about that. The new year's fixed to come around. You're going to get all that again. All right. All right, good. Martin. Thanks, everybody. It's been a lot night, of fun. Everybody. <laughs> Thanks, uh, everybody. Katie, good night. Uh, Martin, see you, see you Martin. Uh, good night to everybody. Uh, I'm going to stick around in the chat room just for a second and say hi to everybody, and then I'm uh, going to be out here. 73, we'll see you guys later. Enjoyed it. 73. All right, guys. Well, we uh, I think we had a pretty fun night tonight. Yeah, it was yes. very nice. Let me get the phone number off here so nobody will call us. Uh, there we go. Okay. All right. Well, Martin, it was it was cool looking at all the stuff you got going on down here, man. I, you know, yeah. If it wasn't man, so I, far, and you're probably glad I'm so far away. If it wasn't so far, I'd probably be down here every week. Oh man, come on down. Yeah. But it, you know. uh, I can't ever tell if that's your real background. Or that or, actually, that's my workbench right there. That is my actual workbench right there. I mean, oh, right now it is. Yeah, yeah. You, ha you see the you see the old Simpson 260 right there. Yeah, I see the Simpson 260. Yeah, and look, look at that. Yeah, Romus. Do you see those two? Do you see the uh, MFJ antenna analyzers right there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I know. Is that real or is that just some? Well, that's stuff? my that's my workbench, but it's over there. But uh, oh, okay. let me do this. Uh, let me do this. I've got a. Uh, I can do this for you. Okay. Since I don't have, since you know, behind me is uh, behind me is nothing actually. But yeah. uh, I can do this. Uh, there we go. So, so see, behind me is basically nothing. Oh. Wow. And then here's you know here's our studio here, but then there's. There's wow. uh there's my workbench over there. Wow. And then, you know, and then we've got 
Master. We've got the, the operating that. operating position over there. Yeah. I thought what was well, I thought what uh, work was a blue screen. That looked like a green screen to me. Well, I'll tell you, my blue screen stopped working, so I had to go green screen. So how does that work? Well, it, it does the same thing. It's just uh, it's just a chroma key. So right now I can either I can put my workbench behind or I can put the ham station behind, you know, like that. Uh, yeah. Or or I, I can, hey, I can go to Studio A. I can go to Studio A, you know, up in New York or somewhere if I want to, you know. Maybe maybe zoom in a little closer or or hey, look, man, watch this video come up in the back back here. Watch this. Let me get out of the way so you can see the video. Yeah. Wait a wow. There it is. There it is. Got another one there. Those so that's uh that's me operating that's me operating portable over in North Carolina. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we can be about anywhere, you know, anywhere we need to be. Let me turn that off. That, that's your house there in uh, in North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, yeah. It's it's our uh, place over in North Carolina right there. And I always take what this video here is showing is. Uh, I'm putting up a, uh, uh, a vertical wire in a tree, and I'm laying about three radios down, and I'm putting an auto tuner out there, and I'll, uh -huh. I'll set the radio up on the front porch there, and we'll operate uh, portable. Uh -huh. So I think, I think this video here is going to show me shooting. I think it's going to show me shooting the, uh, I've got a, a, a it's kind of like a potato gun, you know, you, you, you put air in it and it shoots a projectile uh, oh, yeah. over the limb uh, really high. But uh, let me duck it out of the way here. Yeah. Man, that looks nice. Does any, is there anybody in your house when you're not there? No, she's got, you know, uh, some brothers and sisters that, that use it also. And, uh, uh, like in the winter time, we basically we shut it down for the winter. We winterize it, you know, so it doesn't freeze up or anything like that. Uh, but uh, yeah. you know, during the summer, Kathy gets over, you know, a, a number of times. I, I don't get over there as much, but uh, you know, I, I like getting over there. Yeah, that's a long ways, isn't it? It's like yeah, that's what I, that's what I was talking about. It's uh, it's 500 miles over there. Man, that's too far to. Yeah, that's that's five hundred miles over there. Well, look, hey, we'll close the show out. I, since we're talking North Carolina, I will show you. Here's a little clip of me in North Carolina, uh, near home there. Um, with the uh, let's see if I can find it. This is going to be here. It is right here. Well, this is now. This is a zip line, but I think you would make a good antenna, Martin. So watch this right here. Okay, I got it. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, let's see. A uh, zip line. This is a zip line. Wouldn't it, wouldn't that make wouldn't that make a good antenna? Yeah. Man. Right. Just watch this. Watch this. Wa watch this zip line. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm fixing to take a little zip right here. Watch this. That's you. Yeah, that's me. That's Man, that's me. Long? That's me with the welding gloves on right there. Okay. Now, now look, you notice a little opening down at the very end. You got to go through that opening. You see that opening down there? Okay. All right, now watch this. As soon as he gives, gives me the clear, I'm going to go through that little opening down there on this cable. Okay. So we're about, we're about ready. Here we go. Safety latch on. Check it all out. Move it back and forth. Yeah, everything looks good. Okay, here we go. All right, watch this. Here we go. We'll see you on the other side. Okay. okay. This will be a good antenna. That's you. That's me. How, how many seconds of ride is that? It's pretty short. That's field it's pretty short. It's probably, uh, uh, that may be 1,500 feet. I don't know. Uh, but uh, it was, uh, you know, 
the uh, that particular uh, zip line out there you can go to. They have 15 different lines, and you work your way through the mountains and the valleys and the, and the forest. You know, from from one tree to another and across the valley. So, <sighs> Yeah. I mean, you have to hang on, or you get to sit. Well, on you're you're uh, you you've got a harness on, and it's it's actually clamped, you know, to the cable, and That's you it. just you just go with it, you know. Now the That's reason it. I the reason I had those gloves on is that's how you stop. You gotta you gotta uh, put friction on that top cable to slow down. So it's best to have gloves on. <laughs> uh, well, how do you know when to slow down? You don't just well, stop. Well, you, you, you kind of time it. When you start seeing the tree coming up at the other end that the cable's hooked to, uh -huh. you, you start slowing down because you don't want to really go into that tree full, full speed. You, know? you want to hey. time it where you just yeah, slow down and you just kind of gradually come in. Uh -huh. And then you, you see these guys jump with the parachutes. They just land on their feet. <laughs> You want to yeah. land on that distant platform just like that. Yeah. So if you don't slow down, you just hit it and just stop all of a sudden. Well, yeah. If you don't slow down, you, you would definitely stop. Yeah. You, you would definitely <laughs> stop. But, you know, um, I, that's funny. They've got ways to slow it down a little bit before you get there. There's some ropes and things that will, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of slow you down or catch you there. Well, all right. Martin? I enjoyed it last week, and uh, we'll do the MFJ tour that you gave in a couple weeks if you're able to make it. Yeah. All right. Well, good night to you. Okay. We'll see we'll you. See enjoyed you. it. Good night. Thank Thanks. Uh-huh. Uh. Well, let's see. We'll end this with the cat right here. Here we go. So you're saying I can ask this cat any questions? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. And we will, I'm going to get in the chat room and say good night to everybody. Martin, we'll see you next week. Okay. See you, Tom. Or, or, yeah, after that. All right. Okay, guys. All right. Thanks for joining us tonight, everybody. Uh, glad you uh, glad you made it. Join our Facebook group. Our Facebook group is called W5KUB. We've got about 8,000 members there. Join that Facebook group. It's a good uh, group for uh, ham radio. Uh, the MFJ 50th anniversary should be coming up uh, in 2020. Uh, no, let's say 2022. It should be coming up in 2022. So we've got about two more years uh, to go before the MFJ 50th. Uh, we went down for the uh, 40th and the 45th, and Martin fed everybody out there uh, uh, fried chicken at the park, and it was so good. I can't wait to get back down there and People from all over the U.S. came down for that. Send me three to everybody. I got to get off here. We got to get our program uh, uh, edited uh, for our, our podcast and and get all that stuff going tonight. So send me three to everybody, and we'll see you later.